There are several methods of wiring bathroom fans and lots of things to consider. Is it a new circuit or will the existing wiring be used? Is it a two-plate or three-plate system? What type of fan is being considered? And so much more. So, in this Learn Electrics video, we will consider some of these options and show you some of the more popular wiring methods that we've come across. To begin with, we can look at the components that make up the electrical part of the installation. You will come across two popular types of ceiling rows. Most current ceiling roses are the three plate type with a switch block, a live loop block and a neutral block. Older installations may have two plate ceiling roses with just two blocks or even junction boxes can be used. In the two plate type there is not usually a live loop block. We'll be using three pole fan isolators with connections for a permanent line, a switch line and a neutral conductor. This is to enable the fan to be completely isolated electrically when carrying out cleaning or mechanical maintenance. There are two common types of light switch used for bathrooms. The standard one way or sometimes a two way switch usually installed outside the bathroom and the ceiling mounted pull switch inside the bathroom. We've shown them as two-way switches here, but one-way switches will do the job. Terminal numbering can change between manufacturers. Some will label the terminals as COM or COMMON and L1 and L2. Others will label them as L1, L2 and L3. The little table shows the relationship. If your switch only uses 1, 2 and 3, then the COMMON is the L1 terminal. Luminaires and lamps vary in style and type. In these drawings, we will show a standard batten lamp, assuming we have enough height to install one of these away from the bath or shower. All luminaires and lamps must have an appropriate IP rating for the actual location in which it is installed. In some locations, extra low voltage lighting is a requirement, in which case the step-down transformer for the luminaire must be installed outside the installation zone. Timers allow the fan to stay on when the lights are turned off, what we call overrun. This can vary from say just five minutes to many minutes. Again, different manufacturers will have different ways of setting the overrun period. There can be a rotary switch as shown or a slide switch and these will be mounted on the printed circuit board. Some are accessible from the outside Others can only be adjusted by removing the fan cover. And another method is the pin and bridge type. Three pins are available as shown here and where you place the linking bridge determines the overrun time. In this example it allows a 5 or 10 minute overrun or 15 minutes if no link is used. Let's remind ourselves of the basic lighting circuit without a fan before we start to modify it. All the different lighting circuit types are available on the Learn Electrics YouTube channel or the Learn Electrics website. This is a three plate lighting circuit and we will also consider two plate lighting in this video. Note that the earth or CPC has been left off all the drawings for clarity and to aid understanding. But in real life we should have a CPC connection to all the relevant points. Bathroom lighting and fan installations must conform to the special installation zone requirements according to the wiring regulations and the building regulations and this is explained in another video. Let's look now at some lighting and fan installations. This is the basic layout of a fan with a separate light in a bathroom. With the isolator on, the light switch will turn the light on and turn the fan on and enable the timer function. If the light is turned off, the fan will continue to overrun for, say, 10 minutes. If the isolator is in the off position, the lamp will illuminate, but the fan will not operate. We can begin with the now common three-plate wiring, using a three-plate ceiling rose and wired so that the fan starts the overrun timer when the light is turned off. From the ceiling rose of the basic lighting circuit, we have taken a three-core plus earth strapper cable to the fan isolator switch. From the live loop, we've designated the brown wire as the permanent line and goes to PL at the isolator. 
The black is the switched line or SL from the ceiling rows to the isolator and marked with brown sleeving. The grey is used as a neutral conductor, N, and is marked with blue sleeving or blue tape. Pause the video and understand the connections. Compare this with two plate wiring and a two plate ceiling rose. In this case, the fan will not operate with a timed overrun. If the light is on, the fan is on. If the light is off, the fan is off. There is no permanent line or PL at the ceiling rows. You may come across this with older installations where two plate wiring has been used and now it's difficult to run a permanent line to the newly installed fan. In this case, there is only the switched line and neutral available for the fan, plus earth of course. To make the fan work, we must link the switched line terminal to the permanent line terminal at the isolator switch, or link L1 and L2 at the fan. The fan will only operate when the light is turned on. If the circuit had a three plate ceiling rose and we could run a permanent line to it, then we could enable overrun of the fan. Let's look. In this example, We've run a new PL wire from the circuit breaker to the ceiling rows. Now, using three core strapper cable, we can run a permanent line, switch line, and neutral to the isolator switch and then to the fan. An important point here the new permanent line conductor must come from the same circuit breaker as the rest of the circuit. We must not borrow a permanent line from a convenience supply nearby. That is bad practice and may lead to harm. Number four is all about two plate wiring and three plate ceiling roses, but this time taking a permanent feed from the light switch itself. If it's possible to route a new cable from the light switch to the ceiling rose, we can use this method. Here, I've shown it as running a new three core strapper cable, but it may also be an extra sheathed single to give us the three live conductors that we need. Whichever way we do it, we now have a permanent line, a switched line, and a neutral available to us to enable the fan and the timer to work. What can we do if it's a two-plate lighting circuit and it's not possible to change the existing two-plate ceiling rows? If we can run a new three-core and earth strapper cable from the light switch to the ceiling rows, we now need somewhere to connect the permanent line. We can use a connector block, Wagos, or similar to do this. Another method that you will come across is a bathroom with two lights. One light is standalone and the second is integrated into the fan. The sketch shown gives a basic layout of this method in an ensuite bathroom. One light is positioned more or less central over the wash basin and the second light is integrated into the fan that is installed in the shower cubicle. Only one light switch was used in this installation. The light switch will always turn lamp 1 on or off. With the isolator on, the light switch will turn light 1 and light 2 on, and the fan and timer function also. If the isolator is off, only light 1 will operate, with light 2 and the fan both off. And this is the three plate method of wiring this. We've done nothing special really, except install a fan that has an integral lamp. If it was two plate lighting, similar methods would apply as shown in previous slides. Pause the video if you need to. And lastly, number seven, a fan and an integral light where there is no ceiling rose. I came across this in a house with a small guest toilet downstairs. There was a centrally mounted extractor fan and light combination. The second example, was a small bathroom in an older property with a central fan and light combination. With the isolator on, the light switch will turn the lights on and turn the fan on with the timer enabled. If the isolator is off, neither the lamp nor the fan will operate. And this is how they were wired, direct to the isolator switch. Looking at it, you can see that it has the same connections as a three plate ceiling rose. In this case, Twin earth cable went from the consumer unit to the isolator and also from the isolator to the light switch. Three core plus earth strapper cable was used from the isolator to the fan and lamp combination. Easy when you've seen it done.
There are many variations when it comes to bathroom fan installations. All that we want to happen is that when we turn the bathroom light on, the fan comes on. When we turn the light off, the fan will continue to run until, after a preset time, the fan switches itself off. For safety, the fan isolator switch will allow the fan to be isolated for mechanical maintenance and cleaning. But for electrical maintenance or fan replacement, safe electrical isolation and lock-off at the breaker should be carried out so that no one can accidentally energise the circuit. Always remember to work safely around electrical parts and moving parts. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated, and we hope that you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos, and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.